ついてこれるかはい。In these clips, you'll see how he works and how、uh, incredible he can be. Okay, so here we go. So, here is a short clip of Hie in action. So, first, we see that Hie moves up and activates Breeze. Rene launches. A、uh, line attack on Hiei's party, and it does include hitting Hiei. But due to Hiei's talent, where if he's on the edge of a skill range, he's exempted from damage, he doesn't take anything here. And that's because it's a line attack, so regardless of which tile it hits, he is on the edge of it. Thus, Hiei here takes no damage at all, and thus gets no debuffs. So, we see that Yulia and Chloe took damage, but Hiei just completely avoided that entirely due to the talent that he has. So, this Hiei is actually bringing,、um, it's bringing the Dragon of Darkness Flame skill, it's bringing the Ignore Guard skill, Sword of Darkness Flame, and it's actually brought a one point skill backstab in this case. So, At this point, Hiei, who has activated Breeze, does have high mobility here. So, as a result, Hiei should be able to move in aggressively to attack. So, we'll see what happens. For now, player 2 continues to activate skills for his party, in this case, the faction buff from Juggler, so that Hiei gets that benefit. And. So, player 2 is continuing to heal up his party, getting it all ready for combat. Player 1 activates Tranquility in preparation, while player 2 begins to activate Triton to kind of maneuver the characters to be ready for combat. So, at this point, Hiei gets Attack Blessing as well to further buff him, and now he's Basically, ready to his assault. right? With the faction buff and attack blessing,、yeah. he's ready to go. So, let's see what happens now. So, at this point, Hiei moves forward, launches the AoE attack, Dragon of Darkness Flame. That also allows him to act again, and he goes for that second strike. To kill off Rachel, just like that. So you can see he doesn't heal up to full health. But he, this TA does have Extreme Magic Bow, and thus crushes Gizaroth's、uh, summon and nearly kills Gizaroth, although not quite. But with that, you know, he was able to take out a significant portion of the enemies. You know,、um, he was able to. Kill a character, do AoE damage, and then wipe out a summon from Gizaroth. You know, due to the summon, Gizaroth managed to live, to, because when Gizaroth attacked, he survived with a bit of hit points. But he still did a great job there in severely damaging the enemies and basically taking them out. And with this, Now that Yulia has come in as well as a secondary attack character, to wipe out another character, it's now four characters against three. And more importantly, player one no longer has any real ability of crushing anyone on player two's side. Right? 
So this basically ends the battle in player 2's favor, just like that. So with Hiei launching the initial assault, and then Yulia with the follow-up attack, player 2 is able to just come out victorious, just like that. Yep. At this point it's basically mop-up, and once that's done, the battle will be finished. For this second clip, which is also of the Apex Season 2 playoffs on the Chinese server, we get to see one player used Hiei on his, in his party, and the other player used Yusuke. At this point, combat has begun, and we see that Claret is attacking the Luna of player 2. So, with two attacks, Claret was able to kill off Luna. Or sorry, Liana. What am I saying? Not Luna. Claret attacked Liana and killed her off. But she dies to Hiei attacking. So player 2 has a very traditional party, player 1 has a more combat-oriented party with Yusuke. And now, Juggler gets Reaper's Touch applied onto him. So at this point, Leonhardt goes rushing forward, launches the first Ethereal Fire Machete and stuns Iris, moves in, and tosses out a Fusion Dark Emperor Sword to do AoE damage to all these enemies. And the turn has changed to player 2 acting first, so that Leonhardt was able to kill off Rachel. Of course, in retaliation, <laughs> Leonhardt gets attacked by Listel and will probably die. So it goes from 4v4 to now 3v3. So now it's Juggler, Chloe, and Hiei against Listel, Yusuke, and Iris. So for now, player 1 is busy deactivating Yusuke. So faction buff first, then presumably the transformation skill. Before it happens, Hiei gets to rush in, use his AoE skill, act again, and then strike. Now unfortunately that second strike was not able to kill Listel, so pro perhaps it might have been a better option to go after Iris, but at the same time he did have to worry about Blood Dance. So it's not like that was a bad choice to weaken Listel. Yes, there is the blood dance that I just mentioned. So, the interesting thing there was Hiei used his attack skill, Fists of Mortal Flame, right? So that turned all the healing that Listel was getting into damage. Let me just jump back a little to show that one more time. Right, because she had a whole bunch of healing buffs on her. So, the stealth, blood dance, and then the heal reversal kicks in, where damage, damage, and more damage. So the stealth is almost dead due to the fist of mortal flame attack skill. The stealth was still alive, so she gets to launch another attack. Reaper's touch before killing herself. And now Hiei. First attack. 
And then the second attack, he kills himself, but wipes out Iris. In other words, in this battle, he actually killed off both Listel and Iris because Fist of Mortal Flame caused Listel to die, and then the double attack had Hiei kill off Iris, making it so that it went from 3v3 to 2v1. So Yusuke is now against both Juggler and Chloe. And with this, the battle is over because Chloe survives the Reaper's Touch and now there should be no way for Yusuke to kill off Juggler anymore. Not when Chloe is around to heal Juggler up. And that's what we get to see here. So Yusuke tries attacking, but she he doesn't have enough damage to one shot juggler. So at this point, there is the surrender. So there you go. This was actually a battle where Hiei turned the 3v3 around into a 2v1 and was able to get the victory for player 2. Alright, so from those two example battles, we can see that Hiei can be incredible when used both aggressively or as a defensive character to attack near the end of the fight. So let's begin by talking about Hiei's factions, which he has three of them in fact, Origins of Light, Meteor Strike, and Heroes of Time. He's one of the characters with the most ridiculous number of faction buffs available to him, right? Origins of Light has three characters who can faction buff. The Hearthto, Juggler, and Freya. Realistically, Juggler would be the only character though. Meteor has Zerida. So that's, a sec that's another realistic faction buffer. And then from Heroes of Time, both Joshua and Yusuke are very possible faction buffers that can be brought. So... Lots and lots of faction buff options, right? Theoretically, there's seven. Realistically, there is four available faction buffers. So it's very easy to put Hiei into your party and get him a faction buff. Okay. With regards to bonds, he because he is a collaboration hero, he doesn't need any character to unlock his bonds. You just need to get access to both of his class masteries and that will do it. Alright, with regards to his talent, there's actually three parts to it. Jagged Eye. The first part is that when attacking and entering battle, attack and crit chance plus a certain percentage. At 3 stars, it's 7%, then 9%, then 12%, and then at 6 stars, it becomes plus 15%. So 15% attack increase, 15% crit chance increase. Keep in mind, because this is an attack increase, it will affect the soldiers he brings. So his soldiers also get more attack value to do to hit harder. Secondly, before battle, reduces one random enemy stat by a certain percentage for one turn. So it's 15% at 3 stars, then 20% at 4 stars, 25% at 5 stars, and then 30% at 6 stars. So... It could be ridiculously powerful, depending on what stat gets reduced, right? For example, if you manage to reduce the enemy's defense by 30% before the battle begins, Hiei will hit that much harder and have that much more chance of one-shotting the enemy. And then the third and final part of this talent is that when attacked by an AoE skill, if you are positioned on the edge of the skill span, you take no damage this time. This effect can only trigger a certain number of times per battle. It's one times from 3 stars, 4 stars to 5 stars, and two times at 6 stars. Right? In the battle, in the example videos, we saw him completely evade um, Rene's line attack. So any attack that is considered a line attack, he will always avoid because every single block is on the edge of the span. It's only AO, actual AoE attacks, like let's say um, Earthquake, you know, Demolish, and those things that could actually hit Hiei. And in order to hit him, 
he can't be on the edge of those skills. So it's a very nice bonus effect to have. I'm kind of surprised about it. So there you go. All right. So one thing I should also mention before I go any further is that Hiei has just been released on February 27th. And with his release in the store, there is also a skin you can purchase for him. You get There's 13 days to purchase this skin and it only costs 98 skin vouchers. And it's a pretty nice looking skin for Hiei, in truth. Keep in mind though, there will be the Leon skin coming up very shortly uh, because Apex Season 2 is over. So whether you use your precious skin vouchers on Hiei skin or save up for the Leon skin is up to you. you know? Or of course you can put money into the game and then that way you can purchase both. right? I guarantee you when that skin comes out there will be a gift pack you can purchase which will give you skin vouchers kind of like what we have right now. right? So it's kind of up to you whether you want to purchase the skin voucher pack or you know just choose one of the skins that are available. Okay, so with that skin mentioned, I'm just going to jump back into Hiei and continue talking about him. All right, so we're going to move on to talk about Hiei's best class. He has two classes. One is the Assassin class, Jagged Master. The other is Darkness Flame, which is the Demon class. As usual, Demon classes will have higher overall stats, hit points, attack, and so on. But Demons also do 40% less damage to Holy classes due to class priority. Right? So a 40% damage reduction is absolutely massive. And because of that, you're going to generally choose to make Hiei his assassin class, right? In particular, there are now quite a few assassins that are used in PvP. For example, to name a few, you know, Shefaniel is very commonly used in her holy class, as an example, right? I'm not going to even ignore healers in general, but Shefaniel is generally used in her holy class. Yulia is in her holy class, you know? Although nobody uses Ledin, Leden is generally in his holy class as well, right? Then you have, let's say, uh, and then the mages could be either holy or mage, depending on which, uh, depending on which class the person using the healer likes. But definitely another holy class character would be Wilder, because both of his masteries are both holy classes. So lots and lots of holy class characters used in PvP, and they're characters that you may want Hiei to kill. So as a result, it's probably better to make Hiei uh, assassin rather than demon class. Yeah. Yes, there are some ways to kind of mitigate that. For example, you know, if you give him a judge's talisman, you can do, you can get an extra twelve percent attack and so on. But still, you know. 12% attack increase, but you're still doing 40% damage reduction. It's very, very rough in truth. All right, let's move on. So at this point, let's talk about the skill combos of Hiei. And really, from those battles that you saw, there's three skills that Hiei likes. And one of them is a must bring. The other two are more optional, right? The first one that absolutely must be brought for Hiei is Dragon of Darkness Flame. It's the AoE attack that hits all enemies within four blocks of him, and it damages both himself and the enemies. Right? The secondary effect, though, is that after battle, you gain Dark Dragon, mobility plus one, crit damage plus 20%, and you can act again after attacking. Act again effect can only trigger once per turn, and it lasts three turns. Right? So once the effect has ended, you do become stunned for one turn, but this skill, none of this skill's effects can be dispelled and they ignore immunity. Absolutely amazing, right? So basically you get to, you activate it, you get to attack, next turn you get to attack two more times and then you're stunned. Okay. So as long as you can, so you get two turns of two actions, in other words, which is absolutely huge. Yes, there is that 
stunned turn after that. And that's generally why you see Hiei charge forward, kill things, and then, then, you know, he's there to kill enemies and then die himself due to the stun effect. But theoretically, you could probably pull him back and then get him into the guard range of your tank, maybe. The big problem with doing that, though, is there is that six turn cooldown on this skill. Right? It's a very, very long cooldown. So you have to keep that in mind. Even with those three extra actions, you're still looking at a three turn cooldown after he's stunned and so on. But yeah, just viable options for Hiei. Okay. So other than this skill, which is pretty much a must bring, his other two two point skills that are great is one is from the demon class, which is Fists of the Mortal Flame. We saw this skill used against Listel in the second battle. Right? This skill attacks an enemy unit dealing 1.4 times damage. Okay? Critical hit deals evil fire to both the enemy and yourself after battle. And the effect is that all damage taken is increased by 15% and any healing received is converted into damage equals to 50% of healing amount. This lasts two turns, and this effect cannot be dispelled. Right? However, for you personally, the negative effects are ignored if you're under the Dark Dragon effect. So that is why, generally speaking, you're going to use Dragon of Darkness Flame, then the second skill. His other useful skill he actually starts off with, which is the Sword of Darkness Flame, and we saw this skill be used in the first battle. The the advantage of bringing this skill is that the attack, it's a physical attack, attacks an enemy unit, dealing 1.2 times damage, and it ignores guard. And before battle, you also dispel two enemy buffs. No. Critical hits deals one instance of fixed damage to the enemy and yourself after the battle, and damage is equal to two times the hero's attack. Once again, negative effects are ignored if you are under the Dark Dragon effect. So clearly, he is very powerful once with the AoE attack followed up by a single target strike. Okay. And he can potentially ignore guard as well as do heal reversal. Right? Now, with the skills mentioned, you know, in those example videos, we generally saw people bring backstab on Hiei. And my personal opinion is that it's it's the skill you bring if you only have one point left, right? So if he only has five points, then you would bring backstab. But as we saw pretty frequently, he usually does not attack characters that are at full health, right? Because he's going to activate Dragon of Darkness Flame first, then launch a second attack. So backstab's activation is in truth not that frequent or likely, I would say. So instead of, and then his other one point skills are generally pretty terrible, you know. Uh, adversity that gives him extra defense when his hit points is low, right? Um, sneak that lets him take 20% decreased damage when attacking. Um, and detect that does give him 10% more crit chance and also a chance to disable enemy passives, right? Uh, but yeah. I mean, on the whole, my personal opinion is if you're going to use Hiei, probably awaken him. Uh, my suspicion is that because that was season 2 in those uh, example videos, people didn't have that much awakening materials yet, so they couldn't spend that, uh, you know, get Hiei up to 6 points. And the thing is, once you have 6 points, you can actually bring all 3 of those 2-point skills, right? Dragon of Darkness Flame, then you can bring um, Fist of Mortal Flame, as well as bringing Sword of Darkness Flame. So you can have three at attack skills that way. And I think that's the way to go for Hiei in general. Right. Okay, so with the skill combos covered, let's move on to talk about his soldiers then. Soldier-wise, he starts off with 10% uh, hit point boost. 20% attack boost, and then no defense or magic defense boost. So the attack boost is actually shockingly high, with 20% to start, right? Unfortunately, I was so excited about this, but when unfortunately, when I looked at 
Hiei's uh, third bond, it actually boosts his defense and magic defense, not attack, not hit points. You know, kind of makes sense in a way. If he got another, if he his third bond boosted attack, you're looking at what 45% attack increase for the soldiers, and then you add another 15% here, it would be absolutely insane. So instead of getting that. You know, he gets a defense and match defense increase on his soldiers, and the final bond ends up being a little bit weird. It's 20% hit points, 30% attack, 25% defense, and 25% magic defense. So it's actually very, very balanced overall. Of course, keep in mind that 30% attack also, he also gets another 15% here. So he still has very, very hard hitting soldiers overall. Okay. And in terms of the training ground soldiers that he gets access to, there's three of them. I only have two unlocked. The first one is the Shinobi, right? The second one is Catapults. And then the third one is the one I don't have unlocked, which is the Leviathans. So those are his three soldiers from the training ground. Now, in terms of the best soldier though, you can see basically all of his soldiers are ranged attackers, except for for some reason he gets lobster behemoths from uh, Darkness Blade. <laughs> okay, kind of a weird mix there. But regardless, um, his best soldier is generally considered to be bandits. Okay, the reason is because the bandits do get some increased attack value and they get the increased crit chance rate. So given that, in particular, given that. You really want a crit hit if you use the Fist of the Mortal World skill. The bandits work out quite well overall. You don't particularly want Dark Elf Snipers because as I previously mentioned, it's very rare for Hiei to attack a full hit point enemy. And other than bandits, I mean the other real option would be Hellfire Archers. But keep in mind Hellfire Archers are a demon class soldier, right? and they don't get any increased attack value. So overall, Bandits is the best balance of both attack increase and crit chance increase. You know, Shinobi doesn't have any attack increase, they just get a crit chance increase as well as fixed damage after the battle. And Catapults, of course, they get reduced damage with plus one rage, which makes them a very rare option. Okay, so very very clear best soldier at least, right? Bandits. And the other thing to mention is, if you use Zerida, you're likely to have bandits leveled up. Because Zerida's best soldiers are also usually considered to be bandits, right? You do use help. well, I'm using Hellfire Archers, but in large part that's because my bandits are not complete yet, right? If my bandits were complete, I would probably use them instead of Hellfire Archers. And that's why in, I think the second battle, we did see the bandits with their anonymous skin. So, there we go. Okay, so with that covered, I think the last two points to mention are first, the enchant for Hiei, and second, the gear, right? Enchant-wise, it was pretty obvious. Both battles, we saw the same enchant, and it helps counter Hiei's biggest weakness, which is his lack of mobility. So the best enchant, obviously, is Breeze, right? The chance to get plus two mobility is a mass is a very big deal for here. Other than that, and actually, in both videos, I should mention when he went forward to attack. In both cases, he did have to rely on getting Breeze to activate before he struck, right? Because otherwise, he couldn't move that far forward to launch his AOE attack to hit all the enemies. But uh, if he gets the Breeze activation, then he can charge forward and attack. It's really that simple. So Breeze is his best enchant, and the fact that Breeze also increases your damage dealt by 10% is a nice to have addition. Last but not least would be the gear for Hiei. Gear wise, it was actually very obvious from the battles as well. Right? For his weapon, it, has, it really has to be the weapon that Zerida wants, which I actually don't have by the way which is Extreme Magic Bow, right? We saw Hiei charge forward, attack, then get attacked in retaliation multiple times, right? 
in order for him to do full retaliation damage, he's going to need that extreme magic bow. So that is, simply put, that is his best weapon. Okay. Armor-wise is where it gets interesting. Theoretically, all assassins do want last strikes. Okay. But keep in mind that he damages himself with his Dragon of Darkness Flame, right? So in that sense, I still think he does want last raids because that can at least reduce the damage he takes. But it's just something to keep in mind. Like, uh, he is very, very vulnerable to being attacked because he will not be at full hit points. So I just really wanted to mention that. Okay, After he uses Darkness of Dragon Flame, he will not be at full hit points. So it's important to note that part of Kiei's build. And finally, for the last two gear slots, well, as always, as with any other assassin, you kind of want King's Crown for the helmet. You know, do you absolutely need the King's Crown? Probably not. You could definitely get away with another piece of equipment, like, I don't know, if you don't have that many King's Crown, you can certainly get away with using like a Twilight Armor, Twilight Helmet, or Jormungandir's Eye, or something similar. But being able to potentially buff up an ally with extra damage is always nice to have, so that's why King's Crown would be his best piece of gear. Keep in mind that almost every assassin wants one, every archer, every assassin, so getting that many King's Crowns may not be easy. You know, even I only have four at this time, and that's actually considered a lot too. And last but not least would be the accessory, right? And the best accessory, I mean, I'm going to say the best accessory would be the general choice of something with hit points and attack increase. At least that's my personal thought, you know, like a Slayer's Emblem or something. But you can certainly choose to use things like Judge's Talisman and other options too. You know? I think my personal thought is Slayer's Emblem tends to be a go-to item, so that would be the best in slot. Other than that, you know, you can choose to use Judge's Talisman, you can, use the, you can choose to use the ones that provide plus attack and plus defense too. And there you have it. So that is more or less the way that I see KA should be built, you know. And a lot of that is based on the videos that we saw of KA being used, but also, frankly speaking, I don't see Hiei being all that different from any other assassin, right? The only thing is, you probably do not want the Uller's Bow on Hiei because A, he's using skills, right? And the skills have two range. Having Uller's Bow to give him three range would not help him when he's using those skills. And B, you know, uh... And yeah, that really does conclude it, actually. There's no B aspect to this. Okay. So, at this point, that is everything I wanted to say. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this video useful on, you know, Hiei, on fully covering Hiei. At least, this is how I see he's currently being built. Uh, the, oh, there are two final things I should probably mention, right? The first is in terms of going choosing his classes, right? Because I generally feel his best class is Assassin, you would generally go from his Demon Bandit class to Flames of the Demon World to Darkness Flame before you branch off to the other side. That way you wait, you don't have to, you know, go up one branch, then grab the other branch, then flip back to Dragon Master and have to waste some gold for that. Right? And this other thing to talk about would be, um, I guess, the class mastery in general. So, in terms of class mastery in chance, right, Hiei, I believe Hiei's stat increase stays the exact same as it is right now. So, B, A, D, B, B, and S is, which is very typical for a lot of assassins, right? For example, if I click on Zerida, she basically has the identical stat growth, B, A, D, B, B, S. So in terms of class enchant, right? In general, you can say that A growth on defense and magic defense can make your character 
basically invulnerable to that kind of attack if you have enough uh, if you have powerful enough enchants on your equipment as well as on your class mastery okay so and B comes pretty close as well right for example Landius has B growth on both defense and magic defense but he's pretty deadly but keep in mind of course with the in the case of Landius he does get additional defense from his talent too but moving on talking about Hiei so that means with his B stat growth Hiei can potentially build up his defense or magic defense to survive. Okay. So that's something worth considering doing. You know, um, in general, I which one you choose would be up to you. Like, who do you want to be immune against? Do you want to be immune against, let's say, uh, magic attackers like Yulia and Mystery Knight? Or do you want to be immune to physical attacks like... Um, you know, like Zerida and Omega and those things. So ultimately, it's going to be up to you to decide whether to focus on defense or magic defense. But if you go, keep in mind as well, if you're going to build in that kind of manner, you're going to need ridiculously good enchants. Like I'm talking about enchants that give you plus defense or magic defense with lots of plus hit points. Okay? That's the only way he will be able to tank a hit and survive. So in that sense, you will be focusing on potentially, yeah, you're going to have to re-roll enchants over and over again, the way the top Apex players do, right? And that's why we see the top Apex players from Apex Arena with ridiculous stats um, on their heroes, and they have heroes that just are very difficult to kill in general. So, and then based on that, of course, you will do your class mastery enchants. So with regards to class mastery enchants, if you choose to focus on increasing defense, right, then obviously you're going to probably do just like Zerida, you'll probably do, you know, attack, hit points, skill for some parts, but then on the armor and headgear slot, you'll probably do attack, hit points, and then defense or magic defense, right? Because these two slots only give ten, uh, five skill each you can get a lot more defense and magic defense in these slots if you choose to get uh, that stat. So hit points, defense or magic defense. Hit points, defense or magic defense with attack and attack here. These slots will probably be attack, hit points, and skill for both of these. And then the arena mastery will probably be, you know, attack, hit points, skill. Um, and then the last two will be kind of up to you. Maybe a defense increase, maybe a crit chance increase, maybe the suffered crit damage reduction. Kind of up to you on those last on those last two. Right. And there we have it. So that is the full way to build Hie, including those new class mastery enchants. Okay. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful. And on that note, Nitro out.